All right, here we go. This is, by the way, I should have this up. I apologize since this is the beginning of this video. Where is my mouse pointer? This is the Algebra 2 Trigonometry, June 2016, parts. This is part one. And we're doing problems 15 through 27. The other one's up online as well. All the other two are. The parts, uh, part one, one through 14, and the parts two, three, and four will be up very shortly. Guys, if you used my videos and they helped you, and you know you passed this test after watching this, or even if you didn't, but you know you got a lot out of it, you did better than you never would have, how about throwing me a little love? There's going to be a button up there that you can hit the, the donate. Uh, you know, think about if you hired a private tutor, it'd be $30 an hour minimum, probably. You know, and I don't want that. I don't want that. Even though you probably used hours and hours and hours in my videos, and even if you watch these, you'll probably watch an hour of my video, which is probably a couple hours of my time. A couple bucks, three, four, five, five bucks. Five bucks from everybody would pay for my new computer, which I've already bought and I'm still paying for. But anyway, if you don't have it, that don't have it, but that's okay. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys crushed this test. Let's get going. I'm on problem 15. So we're on page six. Page six, problem 15. For any power of I, the imaginary unit where B is a whole number, uh, I to the B, 4B plus three. Well, if you remember correctly, I to the fourth is one. I to the eighth is one. I to the twelfth is one. Any multiple of four is one. So really what this is, is I to the four B times I cubed. Remember, when you multiply, you add the exponents. Well, this is just one. So really what I have is I cubed. And you kind of need to know what I cubed is. You come over here to your calculator if you don't remember it. And you go I and you cube it. Now, that's negative I. And that is the actual answer, negative I. So if you want to keep going, you can keep going. But the other way to do this problem is just to make up a number for B. Go 5, control, var, B. And then they said, okay, it's I raised to the 4B plus 3. And it's negative I. And it doesn't matter what you store. I can do 9 control, control var B, enter, and redo that again. And it's still going to be negative I because that's the answer. All right, let's move on. All right. Oh, my gosh. I did a problem like this the night before in review. Those of you that were at my review session, you got to be excited. Remember, they're all fractions. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply through by the common denominator. The common denominator is x. So I'm going to multiply this by x, this by x, and this by x. So what I end up with is x squared minus 10 plus 3x equals 0. Well, if I clean all that up, x squared minus or excuse me, plus 3x minus 10 equals 0. I factor this sucker. I get x plus 5, x minus 2. So my answers are negative 5 and 2. Another one, negative 5 and 2. Let me make sure 16 is 1. Another way you could have done it is just take the values, store them into x, and then see which one works. That would have been easier. In a triangle, uh, so this is the, the how many triangles question. So we've got triangle ABC, where angle A is 40, AB is 12, BC is 10. So the how many triangles questions almost always is just the law of sine. So we're going to do 10 over the sine of 40 is equal to 12 over the sine of, and we're actually going to have to find angle C, so we may as well put C in there. Then we just cross multiply. 12 times the sine of 40 is equal to 10 times the sine of C. Divide by 10, divide by 10, and I get sine C is equal to that. So if I bring that over to my calculator, I do control division, 12 times sine 40 all over 10. And I get some weird decimal. So I end up with sine C equals 0 0.771345. 0 0.771345. 
But I still need to know what C is. And anytime you're looking for an angle, the last step will be always inverse. So I'm going to inverse sign this. And I get 50.5. So I get this is equal to 50. 0.5. But remember, with the how many triangles questions, it's not just one angle, it's one or, and I'm just going to make this easy. I'm going to make it 50. And you'll see it, but it's not going to make a difference. So angle, angle C can equal 50 or 130, because don't forget, sine is positive in the second quadrant as well, so you got to find that angle. Now you have to make a decision. So you say, okay. My original angle was 40, right? My original angle was 40, so I'll put that in over there. This makes 90 degrees. Oh, that's enough for another, I can make another angle with that, another 90. And this one makes 170 degrees. Well, that's not 180 either, right? That's not 180 either. So measure of angle C can either be 30, 130, or 50, and the answer is either an acute or an obtuse triangle, or obtuse angle. All right, we're gonna convert. We're gonna convert 23 degrees, 50 minutes to radians. So 23 degrees, 50 minutes. Now to convert to radians, you gotta multiply by pi over 180. All right, so we go into our calculator. And I gotta go in this button here. I gotta get this thing, ding, 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 ding. There it is, 23, 50. Fifty times control division pi over 180. Now I didn't really like this question because it turns out to be a weird decimal. 0.4159, and there it is right now. Point wait 4159 rounded to the thousands place. Woo! Because this is equal to man, that would have been a kick in the head. Equal to 0.4159 rounded to the thousands place. What number is this? 18? Man, that was a tricky one. There's the answer right there. 416. Choice one is your answer, not choice two. Probably should make it look like that. Right here. Here's your answer. Choice one. Round to the thousands place. Okay. That's 18. Let's go to 19. Let's see how many minutes we're into this video. Oh, I'll be back. I never lose an opportunity to have a cup of coffee. All right, here we go. So, yeah, this question, I love this question. Although it is a tough question, I love this question. It said, what is the value of f of f inverse of 3? So the first thing I would do is find f inverse. So I go, okay, y is equal to x minus 7 over 2. To find the inverse, the first step is to switch the x and y. So I get x is equal to y minus 7 over 2. Multiply both sides by 2, I get 2x is equal to y minus 7, or y is equal to 2x plus 7. But that's f inverse. That's f inverse of x. So that's not the answer. That's just what f inverse of x is. So now I'm going to plug in 3. Now remember, you got to plug it into the first one here. So I'm going to do f inverse of 3. So I get 2 times 3 plus 7, I get 13. But now I got to take that and plug it into f. Well, f says, f of 13 says, take x, which is 13, subtract 7, and divide by 2, and I get 6 over 2, which is 3. Now, if this goes a long way, a long time ago, if you have two numbers that are inverses, f of f inverse is just whatever x is. So in this case, f of f inverse of 3 is 3. If I did f of f inverse of 8, I would get 8. It's just how that works. But that's the mathematics behind that one. What is the equation of the circle that passes through this? Well, here's the center. Now, don't forget, when the center goes in, it goes in with opposite signs. So that's one of these two. So now what I got to do is I got to figure out what the radius is. Now I can use the distance formula. I don't necessarily like that. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And let's see, the center is at negative two, three. 
And one of the points is negative 5, negative 2. Negative 2, 1, 2, 3, negative 2. So what I, I like to just make right triangles. Oops, that's clearly not going to be a right triangle. Ah! That's clearly not going to be a right triangle. Let me put that point back in there. So if I, I'll just stick with this. If I make this right triangle, uh, this is 3 and this is 5. So I just do the Pythagorean theorem to find the radius. 3 squared plus 5 squared equals radius squared. Don't forget, radius squared goes on the right side. 25 plus 9 is 34. Choice 3. Four left, kids, four left. So let's see here. I'm going to just do this. Th I'm going to do this the way they wanted you to do the problem. Um, this becomes c to the negative 2 over c to the negative 3 minus c to the negative 3 all over c to the negative 2. Well, negative exponents just move. It's in the denominator, it goes to the top, it's in the top, it goes to the denominator. So what this really becomes is c cubed over c squared minus c squared over c cubed. Well, this simplifies to just c, and this simplifies to 1 over c. And if I make a common denominator, c squared over c minus 1 over c, I get c squared minus 1 over c. 21, choice 4. Now you could have, you could have simply typed in a number for c and checked to see which one works. Either way would be fine. What is the fourth term of the binomial expansion of this? Boy, I'm always happy I did this problem the night before. 6c0, 6c1, 6c2, and 6c3. There's the fourth term. Two sets of parentheses. Uh, let's see what 6 choose 3 is. So menu 5, 3, 6, comma, 3, 20. So this is equal to 20 times 2x times negative 1. I just got to figure out what these exponents are. And you remember, this is the way I do it. Now, some of you guys use Bert, um, Pascal's triangle. I'm not a big fan. I mean, it's certainly doable. Start 6, 5, 4, 3, and... 0, 1, 2, 3. Don't forget the exponents have to add up to 6. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to type it into my calculator, just the numbers. And if I type just the numbers into my calculator, not this x, just the numbers, I end up with negative 160 x cubed. All right, next page. If the roots of the quadratic are real, and here's the most important word, irrational. And we went over this the night before. If something is irrational, it really means you just can't take the square root of it. It's not nice. And it also can't be negative, because negative would be imaginary. I can take this, and if it's zero, they would be equal, not unequal. One, I can take the square root of one. So here's your answer, right there. All right, this is just an arithmetic sequence. Notice I'm adding 4, adding 4, adding 4. So I say a sub n is equal to negative 1 plus n minus 1 times 4. So, oops. So all I got to do is figure out which one is the right one. And you'll notice that it's really just this one. The only difference that they did was they put the 4 out front. Doesn't matter. Choice 2. What is, and this one kicked a couple of kids' butts right here. This word, sample standard deviation. You actually had to read and be very careful. So let's get into this. Ah, too much crap open. Let me get rid of it. Nope. All right, so up here is ah, x, frequency, 50, 60, 70, 80. So 50, 60, 70, 80, 
90, 100, 1, 2, 7, 6, 1, 2, 7, 6, 3, 2. All right, so all I got to do is do a little bit of one variable statistics. Now, you got to be careful. You have a frequency column. So if you have a frequency column, you got to do it slightly different. You're going to go to statistics, stat calculations, one variable statistics, one list. But the only difference is here's my X list, but I have a frequency list. Because I have a frequency list, I have to select that. And I want the sample standard deviation. And remember, sample standard deviation is the SX, so 12.78. So the answer is 12.78, which is just rounded to 12.8. How are we doing with time? I'm going to stop. I'll be right back. <sighs> Apparently, I'm not. Okay, we're getting there. We only got two left. We got three left, right? 26, 27. I don't know what we got. Let's just keep going. Three, two left, 26 and 27. All right, so. This question here, it's either one you might know or you could check. So I'm going to check it. I'm going to show you how to use the calculator to do this. So let me bring this off to the side over here. Uh, can I do that? Let me go over there. It won't let me go over there. Anyway, so I guess we're going to have to go back and forth. So I'm just going to take any value, 25.3, and I'm going to store that into X. That's my angle, 25.3. Who cares what it is? It doesn't matter. So now I'm going to do cotangent squared. Now you've got to be careful. It's cotangent of X squared equals... And then I'm going to do 1 minus secant squared. So it's 1 minus parentheses secant of x squared. And you'll notice those are not the same thing. And this is, in fact, the answer. We know that. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So if I brought that cosine squared over, that would work. And this is just one of the trig identities. Tangent squared is equal to that. And this is also one of the tangent the squared identities. And there it is. And finally, we end with an easy one. I can't believe they ended with this one. Which one has the sum of negative? So sum is equal to negative b over a. Um, so I need negative 9 over 4. So it's not going to be one of these. It's not going to be one of the 8s. So, wait, sum is negative b over a. Excuse me, it's not going to be one of these. So negative b over a, if I take this and I negate it, 27, and I put it over a, 12, does that equal negative 9 fourths? Let's see. 3 goes in there negative 9 times. 3 goes in there 4 times. That looks like that might be it. Now I'm going to try product. The product of the roots is C over A. Um, 8 over 12. 8 over 12. And that is, in fact, 2 thirds. So there is your answer. And kids, that ends the multiple choice. There it is. Multiple choice. All done. When you come back, It'll be parts two, three, and four. My God, I hope you're enjoying yourself. Please do me a favor. Don't forget, you can hit the you can hit that button up there. Toss me a couple bucks. Let me know basically what you're saying. If you throw me three, four, five bucks, you're saying, Mr. Cross, I really, I mean, I know you're saying it in your videos and your, your comments and stuff. I really, really, really appreciate it. And I'm going to go out of the way to take a couple of minutes to throw you a couple of bucks so you can help maybe pay off and offset the cost of that computer. All right, kids. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Peace out, kids. Catch you on the flip side.